Well, welcome to the session on FIDO for online payment authentication. During the next few minutes, we would like to take you along on our journey to with the good cardholder authentication experience. A journey that started as back as March 2015. Today's speakers, well, there's me, myself. I have the good fortune of working for PlusCard, a credit card issuing processor located in the southwest of Germany. Um, there I lead the Department of Fraud Prevention and Cardholder Disputes. And in this role, it was somehow natural that strong cardholder authentication would fall onto my responsibility. And here alongside with me is Uwe from Intersect, the company yeah, hi. that <laughs> along with our, yeah, along with um, our trusted partner, et cetera, is responsible for our current SCI setup. So let me pass on over to you, Uwe, maybe for yeah. introduction. Thanks so much, uh, Petra. Yeah, hi. Uh, everybody, my name is Uwe, Uwe Hertel. I'm a country manager at Intersect uh, and responsible for Intersect's activities in Central and Eastern Europe. I'm, I'm based uh, out of Munich. Thank you, Petra. Um, let me give you a quick overview of what we're going to touch about during the next few minutes. Um, first of all, we're going to give you a brief update of PlusCard, who we are, and our customer profile get into the regulations, the PSD2 um, solutions we have in place currently for strong cardholder law authentication and the requirements we defined for a new or alternative um, solution. So let's get started. A little bit about us, my company, PlusCard. We're an issuing processor. Um, our customers are individual uh, saving banks, Sparkassen, for those of you who are familiar with um, the Sparkassen in Germany. Their customer base is from several thousand cardholders up to 300,000 cardholders. They issue MasterCard and Visa. It's pretty much a 50-50 um, solution here with MasterCard and Visa. And of our cardholder base, they come from every age and all walks of life. Um, back in 2015, when we first started about thinking about a new solution, only about half of them were active in the e-commerce. And um, a good 5 or 10% of those active in the internet were not in the possession of a mobile phone or maybe not willing to use one for the authentication. So on the next slide, um, I'd like to give you a little overview um, where we were standing when PSD2 came along. Well, 3D Secure um, has been around for quite some time. And I think in Germany, the first bank to introduce 3D Secure was uh, even in 2008. The strong cardholder authentication was hardly ever an issue in Germany until the regulators enforced it with the PSD2. And while the PSD2 includes many different regulations, I guess from a customer perspective, it was clear that uh, strong cardholder law authentication was A, the most important one, and B, definitely the most crucial one, since it was clear that it would change the way we shop on the internet dramatically. And um, we, tr we were trying to find a solution that was as frictionless as possible. It was early on into the journey that it was our belief that we should not just apply any strong card law authentication just to meet the regulation, but we should look for a solution that would be that would comply and be user friendly at the same time. And while most competitors um, went with SMS OTP, at least in Germany, um, we wanted a solution that would be more convenient and more secure. I mean, back then it was already clear that SMS OTP would not last, even though it's been around for a long time. Cardholders were used to it. Um, this was not the way we wanted to go. So therefore we were happy when, when Intersec came along and presented us a solution that seemed to make a lot of sense. And I'll show it uh, to you in a bit. Um, because they introduced the idea of an app-based authentication solution. If we go to the next slide, I can show you what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Cardholder performs his um, shopping, and on the checkout, he gets a message, a push notification in his app, 
um, please confirm this transaction at Merchant ABC with this amount. And this is your card number. Um, you need to confirm or discard. Now, back in 2015, that was a very planned decision. As I said earlier, um, smartphones were not really widely spread in Germany. But yet we decided to go that road and um, we were pretty sure we would stick with it for a long time. But in the back of our mind, we always knew that the day we might need an alternative. Um, that day came when PSD2 really came into in effect um, early last year. Finally, you know, it's been postponed several times. So looking at an alternative, um, we had to define a requirement. And if you go on the next slide, um, back in the days before COVID, Intersect, et cetera, and us, we would come together at least at the end of the year in person to look at what went well in the past year and the road ahead and bring an idea on the table of what could work. Uh, so PlusCard had that desire um, to come up with an alternative for the app for those users uh, we had out there that weren't willing to use the smartphone. It had to be SCA compliant, of course, uh, PSD compliant, I shall say. And one thing was very important to us that it should be future proof. And again, I would expect that um, came approached us with the idea of introducing FIDO, but FIDO in the form of hardware, um, FIDO token, FIDO stick, because as I said, we wanted to. Um, the requirements of those people that feel more comfortable um, if they don't rely on a smartphone. And um, it took some convincing internally at PlusCard because we um, heard around, we listened, we went into the market and we came to find out that we were quite likely the first movers here in Germany. And later on, we should find out we were probably the first movers here in Europe. Um, I can tell you that the reaction was one that we never expected. A lot of people approached us, a lot of people came towards us and said, well, finally somebody dared to make that first move. Um, but let me now turn over to Uwe. Maybe Uwe, you wanna get a little bit into the technical details of our journey here. Thanks for handing over. Um... Yeah, maybe a quick word on Intersect. Intersect uh, is, is all about uh, securing uh, digital transactions, right? Any kind of digital transaction. Um, Intersect is uh, a company headquartered in, in South Africa with a, a very strong footprint in Africa, in, in Europe and in the Americas. And um, as I said, um, it's about securing digital transaction, meaning authentication right so one of our core competences is authentication in in all its uh, flavors so in the end um, it all consists and and leads back to our uh, backbone our back end which is uh, the intersect uh, secure platform you see on the right hand side the esp which is our single authentication app being connected via API interfaces to the financial institutions, maybe a retail bank or a card issuer. And um, this uh, ESP is actually uh, responsible for orchestrating um, transaction and authentication of transactions uh, in order to be able to secure all these transactions uh, our our uh, our main objective is to secure the customer endpoints right all the the endpoints a, a customer may have in use which is either a mobile phone a tablet or a notebook or a pc and uh, and this is actually the the basis of of our of our solution so when when we have May ensure that the end, all the endpoints are secured. We are able actually to use that in order to um, um, to use uh, uh, the authentication factors. Uh, may it be a possession factor, may it be an inherence factor, or may it be an, a knowledge factor to secure each uh, digital transaction. To, for example, a payment transfer or a, a secure login to a, to a website. Right, and as you may know. PSD2 
is uh, mandating to use at least uh, two of these three uh, authentication uh, authentication factor categories, right? And uh, we are satisfying all these three categories, maybe possession, inherence, or knowledge. But of course, our the focus of our uh, uh, today's presentation and the focus of of our project uh, together with Pluscard has been based on FIDO authenticators, right? So uh, FIDO authenticators is is something we enable through our uh, infrastructure, and um, I would like to. Um, give you maybe a background of the the project timeline right so the last uh, the last steps uh, we have taken in the last three years in order to enable plus card to use uh, our fido solution it all started uh, from a project point of view in 2019 right where we had a joint workshop together uh, with plus card and etc the implementation partner um, and ourselves where we identify <clears throat> the need uh, for a hardware token for a special a segment. I, I would call it a niche segment, but uh, it, it, it's always important to, to, um, to have all your customer base enabled, right? To use your solution. And uh, we, we have identified this, this segment uh, and um, defined uh, a way to, to satisfy the need of a segment of users which do not either have a smartphone or which are kind of reluctant to use their app for, for money transactions, for payment transactions. And that was the start of the idea to actually um, define a FIDO hardware token as a, as a solution to provide strong customer authentication. And that was the start and it, the, it, the, it, the, uh, the initialization of a project at Intersect actually to develop uh, a FIDO server based on the FIDO Alliance FIDO 2 uh, certification. Um, and that took place in 2020 where we finally achieved the, the certification of our FIDO2 server as per the latest uh, specification available by the end of 2020, as, as, exactly in, in December, right? And, and that was the starting point for Pluscard and our partner and etc. the implementation and long-term 3D secure uh, payments provider of Pluscard to implement uh, and connect uh, uh, our FIDO server with uh, the, the, the existing uh, 3D secure processes and, and user journeys, right? So, and, and that was a implementation project which actually resulted in a, in a go live in, in May, June uh, 2021. And uh, actually, uh, Petra, that was quite interesting. We thought it's it's definitely the first project uh, in, in this kind uh, of this kind in in Germany, probably in Europe. But when we actually launched it, uh, we realized, together with the FIDO Alliance, that that was a world's first of FIDO two implementation when it comes to three D secure payments. And that only uh, we were only able to to manage this project together with uh, um, uh, different partners. So it was a kind of uh, we may go to the next slide, uh, a, a, a big uh, industry collaboration, I, I would call it, right? So it was not only uh, uh, the two of us, uh, Pluscard uh, and Intersect, no, it all, um, it, it was all based on uh, certainly first uh, of all on uh, FIDO alliances uh, standards uh, and, and certification. So FIDO Alliance is the industry body allowing for all of that, right? And then gave us the specifications and certifications uh, to certify our, our FIDO 2 server and keep it uh, uh, at latest state of the art. And of course, all of that was implemented and enabled uh, by Netcetera, the digital payments expert, one of our major partners and uh, uh, yeah, a 3D secure solutions partner with a very strong uh, footprint <clears throat> in, 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 in Europe uh, and uh, long-term standing partner of, of Pluscard. And last but not least, but very important when it comes to penetration, the W3C 
which is the World Wide Web Consortium, uh, which is actually responsible for enabling FIDO as a standard with all the existing or all the major browsers uh, in the world when it comes to mobile browsers, uh, web browsers, and uh, all the operating systems where, where FIDO authenticators may be a roaming authenticator or a platform authentic the authenticator need to be enabled to support right the user journey the FIDO user journey and I think that leads us already to a nice demo Petra right? yeah let's, let's see it in action which is not that spectacular as a matter of fact this is FIDO the alternative to our app and um, please easily um, authenticate yourself you were just the merchant, you put your goods into your basket, you check out after entering your cutholder data, of course. And here it comes, you are asked to please confirm if your FIDO token this, um, this transaction. Please authenticate yourself, insert the FIDO token, and that should look fam be familiar to you. Um, please register, use your PIN, tap the token, make sure it's you, your life. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have second thoughts, then just this card here, your transaction, and that's it. And as I said, you know, from a lot of, uh, a lot of people thought when looking at this, this is really a step back from, from the app, which seemed seamless and easy. But the thing is, I did not quite understand that this is exactly the group of people we wanted um, to serve here. And to us, um, the idea, simply thrilled us that here you have an authentication that is not only for 3S, but you can use it for all other use cases. So for the first time, we give the cardholder a solution that's not solely for us, but with that token, he can authenticate him in every other way, wherever possible. And that idea um, kept us and thrilled us. And um, I'm happy to say we're, gonna, we're ready to move on along with Intersect and et cetera. You're ready to go the next step over, correct? Yes, exactly. And I think to wrap it all up, uh, we have a final uh, slide for you uh, uh, showing that. Um, and in the end, right? I mean, Petra, I, I hope you agree. That's only at the start, right? That, that's only the start of our yeah. road uh, together with uh, FIDO. Yeah. Um, certainly based on good collaboration of all uh, parties, but this will continue and, and we already uh, decided to continue, right, this collaboration. And the next step, and that's a logical step, is, is using platform authenticators, which allows every user to use his device, right? May it be a notebook, may it be a mobile phone, may it be a tablet, right? And make this device turn that device into a platform authenticator, right? Using and enabling a FIDO authenticator uh, to, uh, in order to, yeah, to, to, to authenticate uh, any kind of digital transactions in the future. And, and that project is already, yeah, started, I, I may say, right? But it's a logical next yeah. step, right? And, and that gives us already an indication where the future of authentication lies, right? The because the future of authentication for all of us will be passwordless, yeah? And here we go. We are on track. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you for, uh, thank you for letting us share the story here. <laughs>